Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له من دون الله وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله ربه بالرحمة المهداة فهدانا به من بعد الضلالة وجمعنا به من بعد الشتات فجزاه الله عنا خير ما جزى نبيا عن أمته أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد we begin as we always begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His guidance. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Him from the evils of our souls and the sins that we have committed. Whomsoever Allah guides is indeed guided. Whomsoever Allah leads astray will find no other guide. We bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship other than Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. Indeed, the best of speech is the speech of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet alayhi wa sallam. The uh, 
Prophet ﷺ used to have a daily word. Uh, the word is, is an Arabic word for something that you habituate yourself to do. So the Prophet ﷺ had a word of the Qur'an, so he read a certain portion of the Qur'an every day. But he also had a word of dua. There were certain ad'iyah, certain du'as, that he read at particular times of the day on, on doing certain things, when he woke up, when he went to sleep, and when he left his house. And one of those du'as is what we want to spend a little bit of time with today. So this is the du'a of the Prophet ﷺ that he did every day when he left his house, when he left his home. And that dua was this Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an azilla aw uzal aw adilla aw udal aw adhulima aw uzlam aw an ajhala aw yujhala alay Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an azilla aw uzal aw adilla aw udal aw adhulima aw uzlam aw ajhala aw yujhala alay O Allah, I seek refuge with you from falling into error or leading others into error from going astray, or being misled, or being misguided, or misguiding others. From being oppressed, dealing, being dealt with unjustly, or oppressing others, dealing with others unjustly. And from being harmed, or harming others. And so in the language of the day, if we talk about the language of our society today, this is everyday anti-oppression in action. The Prophet ﷺ, every morning, every time that he left his home, was very aware of this idea that he is seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being mistreated and from mistreating others. That being oppressed is as bad as oppressing others. Being harmed is as bad as harming others. And this is the direct translation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ narrates when he says, Ya qul rabbul izza, ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman, fala tadhalim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a hadith Qudsi that the Prophet ﷺ narrates, O my servants, O my servants, I have made oppression or injustice forbidden unto myself and I have made it forbidden amongst you so do not oppress one another do not oppress one another that language of course is language that is unique there is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids on himself but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that language to remind us to teach us of just how important this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids injustice or oppression upon himself and has made it forbidden between us and so we should not oppress one another. There are levels of oppression of course but what the Prophet is teaching us is that that commitment to justice, that commitment to fairness, that commitment to giving everyone their right, their due, the commitment to not cheating people out of even small things is a commitment that has to be made and renewed every day. And so I want us to imagine what our world would look like if all of us, not only in our community, but in our society, in our country, in our world, woke up, if the majority of people woke up every day and reiterated, recommitted themselves to a vision of a world in which we do not lead others astray, we do not misguide others, we do not harm others, we do not oppress others or deal with them unjustly. What would that world look like? If every one of us makes that commitment every day, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min azilla wa uzal, the true 
articulation, though, the true practice of this anti-oppression and commitment to justice is expressed in two ways. It is easy enough, we'll say easy, to identify and to not want to have oppression fall upon ourselves. That's easy. But the commitment, the real commitment to justice, to adl, the real commitment against oppression, against zulm, is in two things. The first one is when the zulm, when the oppression, when the justice is being done by us, or people like us. And when the oppression is happening against people that are not like us, not our people, not our blood, not our family, not our kin, and so on. Take the first one for a second. The Prophet ﷺ came into a society that was very well known for its ties of kinship. The family was against the clan, the clan was against the tribe, the tribe was against other tribes, and people fought long wars for nothing other than loyalty to a bloodline, or to a name, or to a tribe. And the motto of that society was Unsur Akhaka Waliman al Mazluma. Support your brother if he is being oppressed or if he is the oppressor. And so the Prophet taught his companions, Unsur Akhaka Waliman al Mazluma, the same thing. But of course, by that time, people had absorbed enough of Islam to understand that that is not what Islam is calling for. And so they said to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, Nansuruhu Mazluman, Fakayfa Nansuruhu Waliman. We understand that we would support our brother if he is oppressed. How do we support our brother when he's the one doing the oppression? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Bi Adakhuda ala yadayhi, Fatamnahu min al that is, you take action to prevent him from oppressing others. You support your own by making sure that our own do not commit oppression. And so we stand for adl, for justice. We stand against injustice, vulm or oppression, irrespective of who is the oppressor. And if it, even if it is one of our own, even if it is our family, even if it is our own group, even if it is our own community. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhadaa lillahi wa law ala anfusikum. Tayyib, the second piece, which is who the oppression is happening to. Yesterday there was a, a very large march, alhamdulillah, in support of First Nations. It comes out of what we have seen, the news that we have been seeing repetitively over the last few months. And the news reports say about 10,000 uh, Londoners marched. There were many Muslims there, alhamdulillah. We, many people in the community went out. But that moment of supporting First Nations and the injustices that have been perpetrated against them is a moment of truth for us as a community. We said that there are two tests for whether we really truly stand for justice. The first one is what happens when we're the oppressors, or one of us, or some of us, and we have to stop that from happening. But the other one is when the oppression is happening to people we don't know. Many of us do not have any strong ties to First Nations. Many of us know very little about the history of First Nations, and what has happened to them in this country. And so it is easy for us to say, we're not part of that oppression, we're not part of that injustice, we didn't cause it, we didn't perpetrate it, we didn't take away people's land, we didn't take away their children, and so we say it's someone else's problem to fix. But if we are to have a real, true, deep commitment to justice, if we really truly understand the meaning of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands justice and kindness or excellence, then we would understand that that is our role to play. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, when you see something that is wrong in the world, the least that we can do is to react against it emotionally. 
is to have a stand against it with our hearts. من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان. أضعف الإيمان the, the bare minimum is that when we hear about the injustices that happen to other people, the bare minimum is that we reject these injustices. And that in our hearts, we hope that, we pray that people will find justice, that our society will find its way to restoring the rights that were violated and were taken. But we are stronger than that. And we want more than that for our society. We want to do more than just deny things in our heart. And there is an opportunity for us to be standing up for justice and for what is right. We have an obligation as people that have been routinely the subject of injustice, the, the people that have suffered from oppression, both at home and around the world, we have an obligation to do more about those that are suffering injustice and oppression. And when it comes to First Nations, we need to raise our knowledge, our awareness, our education of what has happened to First Nations and what continues to happen. There are many resources that are available. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission has a long series of calls to action, but any cursory reading of the history of First Nations will give us an idea about what has happened to them. That is the least that we can do. We need to ask ourselves this question when the Prophet ﷺ recommitted himself to justice every day. Every day that he got up ﷺ and left his home, he made this commitment to justice, to fairness, to fighting oppression, to making sure that he does not oppress others or participate in their injustice. We need to ask ourselves, how willing are we to walk in those footsteps when it takes effort? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an azilla au uzal, au adilla au udal, au adhlima au uzlam, au ajhala au yujhala ali. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfiru Allah al-Azim alakum, fa astaghfiru yaghfir lakum. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه والله أكبر والله الحمد عباد الله يعلم أن الله أمركم بأمر عظيم بدأ به بنفسه وثنى به على ملائكة عرشه واختتمه بكويه والمؤمنون حيث قال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نزل أو نزل أو نظل أو نظل أو أن نظلم أو نظلم أو أن نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم لا تلع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا غائبا إلا سالما غانما إلى أهله رددته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا لك فيها رضا ولا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها ويسرتها يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيوكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم remember Allah he will remember you واشكروه يزدكم thank him he will give you forever more واستغفروه يغفر لكم seek his forgiveness he will surely grant it to you وأخذ الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Can you pray the Sunnah next time, inshallah, at home? Jazakumullah khair.